Now, I know you guys are asking, Joey, what in the heck is going on? What is this? Give me a moment, I'll explain it all to you. Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Joey again. You're watching Vegas D-Tech. I got another e-video for you today. And guys, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Actually, it's not even a little bit different. It's a whole lot different. But I'm doing it as a favor to a few viewers that have asked me uh, in my little journey here into the e-bike industry, uh, reviewing a bunch of the e-bikes and e-alternate transportation. I've had some people ask me, Joey, I want to ride e-bikes, but I just can't do it because I have issues. And so I'm trying to answer for Glennis, who says that you have like a bad knee. Steven, you said you've had a couple of back surgeries that prevent you from riding bikes. Nadine, you say that you have a situation with your balance where uh, you can't keep balance on a bike and that you need something else uh, if there's something possible. And Martin and Judy, you say that you travel around in an RV and that you don't have enough room for a full uh, e-bike, but you'd like to have something that is easily portable and storable. And guys, I think I found something that might suit your needs and it's sitting back here behind me. It is the C1 Adult Sit Scooter by a company called Gyroar. Let's take a look. All right, everybody, this is the C1 adult sit-down design scooter by the company Gyroar, and I believe this is going to fit the ticket for many of you folks out there that are looking for an alternate type of an e-transportation, but you can't use a full-size bike because you have medical issues or you, you don't have the room to appropriately fit a full-size bike or even a folding bike. This right here, guys, is going to be something along the uh, size that you might need, okay? Let's get along with the specs on it. This thing weighs about 35 pounds. This is gonna be very easy for you to fold up and stick into a small little area, into a trunk of a car, into uh, the back seat of a car, into a truck bed, what have you. You can put two of these back there and it'll take up very little room. Uh, it holds, the, the website says that this thing can hold up to 264 pounds. I'm gonna be quite honest with you, I'm six feet tall. 215 pounds and uh, although it can move me guys I don't think that this thing should be holding much more than 200 and say 20 pounds it has a maximum speed of 15.5 miles per hour and I believe that is all regulated by the uh, speed controller because my girlfriend Maria she is 135 she has been able to get it to 15.5 miles an hour I am 215 pounds and I have also been seeing the same speed of 15.5 so i don't think it has anything to do with the power uh the power delivery to the motor because that is a 450 watt motor i believe that they've actually pushed the speed down to 15.5 there's actually three speed settings on it there's three speeds on it i believe the first speed power mode one is like five miles an hour power mode two is around nine to ten miles an hour and then power mode three takes you to 15.5. It's not made to be a speed racer, a speed demon. It's just something that's supposed to be casual to roll you around, say a campsite or around, you know, uh, hiking trails, you know, little walking trails and so forth like that. So it's not supposed to be anything aggressive that might get away from you. And that's the reason why they've down the speed down to 15.5.
All right, guys, so we have a 450 watt motor right down here. It is tied to, underneath here, guys, we're going to have a 36 volt, seven amp hour battery. All right, guys, so you're gonna charge this battery, which is located down here below the bottom of the scooter. You're going to put your power plug right in here, charge it up, and then when you're done, you'll just close this thing up, keep all the water out of it. They're saying that the average charge time on this scooter is gonna be about five hours to get it all the way up to full from zero charge. Some of the simple features that are on it are going to consist of, you're gonna have front and rear brakes. These are gonna be manual type brakes. They both have rotors front and rear, as you can see. These are 140 millimeter rotors with calipers here, and they're the manual type, front and rear. It's gonna come with one of those little bells. That's enough to get people to notice that you're coming down the walkway, and I like that. At least it's not that buzzer that sounds kind of a, you know, kind of like, get out of my way. Actually, this right here, a lot of people like the bell. They just look back and they move out of your way. I hope you can see this right here because the sun is rather bright, but you're going to have a very basic uh, instrument cluster here. You're going to show the miles per hour, your trip meter, and how much power you have left in your cell. Power on and off is going to be via this one button off, one button on. Your, uh, your uh, throttle is going to be a half throttle right here, so all you're going to do is just twist this thing to go. And of course, front and back brakes to stop. It does come with a headlight. All you do here, you push this down twice. One, two, and that should. Yeah, it'll get your headlight on. Even though it's a small unit, it is quite bright. And it also comes with a rear brake light. And when you hit the brake, it flashes for you. It also includes a basket. You could either take the basket on or off. It's very nice because, uh, you, so my girlfriend likes to carry a little bag, maybe a little lunch tote, a little igloo, throw some water in it, a couple of drinks, maybe a snack or two, and just drop the bag right back here and just get along your way. And to adjust your seat, you're just gonna use this little clamp right here. This is all the way in the lower position, and then you can bring it up, bring this thing back in here, lock it in, and you could raise it all the way up uh, to, you know, a six foot tall rider. Or, you know, if you're a very small wheel, let's say about five feet, you can just bring it all the way down to the bottom. However, the neck and the handle cannot be adjusted. It is automatically set to this height right here. The tires are gonna be 12 and a half inch tires by two inches wide and little mud guards to keep water from splashing all over the place. Now, if there was anything that I could uh, ask the company to make better on this bike would be probably this light right here. If you could incorporate a bracket back here behind the basket because what ends up happening is that if you throw a bag back here 
and you stuff it in, you no longer have a brake light. However, if you were able to put a bracket back right here, then this guy could be moved back here, and then you would just take the cable and just bring it down to the bottom, attach it. That'll be out of the way of the basket, and you could have a much needed and useful stop brake light behind here in the back of the bracket. So I would ask that to be done. And like I said, number two, I'd like to see the stem adjustable. It looks like they do have some room here for the wiring, so you should be able to get it to where you could actually bring the, the uh, handle up maybe five or six inches. That'll give you an option that if a person wanted to stand on it, they could just do away with the seat and use it as a stand scooter and not necessarily a sit-down scooter full-time. Who do I think would benefit from something like this? Well, obviously, it's going to be people with mobility issues, people that don't have the uh, capability to ride a bike anymore, people that have bad knees, arthritis, you know, surgeries and so forth. You're unable to actually get on a bike, but you still want to be able to get out. Maybe you can't walk for long distances, but you don't want to have one of those like mobility type scooters. This is going to get you up to 15, 15 and a half miles an hour. You'll be able to scoot around walking trails, beaches, campgrounds and so forth. You can throw into the back here a little bit of a, you know, a little bag right here. Go to the souvenir shop, pick up some, some items, uh, grab some food. And just overall, guys, it's just going to be a very easily uh, storable, easily transportable scooter. And the price range is right. The price on this here, I believe, is $379. Now, I've seen this scooter come in at prices upwards of $800 for basically the same thing. But I do believe for $379, this is going to be the perfect solution for many of you folks out there that need alternate types of e-transportation. You can't use a bike, but you want something that's easily transportable. You can put it in the back seat. You could put it in a hatchback. You could put it in a trunk. If you have an RV, this will fold up quite nicely. You could stick two of them into the back of your RV, get where you gotta go, pull them down. You're gonna have uh, 25 miles of range on it, and you could just ride around the city in the bike lanes. I wouldn't suggest you trying to climb hilly areas with it. Now, the website suggests that this scooter can climb a 10 degree slope, but I believe if you tried to do that, you'd be pushing it, probably going up two miles an hour, and just really taxing the motor. I would suggest that you use it for flat areas like this, campgrounds, parking lots, parks, and so forth, and then it will deliver everything it's supposed to deliver. So guys, that's everything I have for you today. I hope I was able to help some of you out there that are looking for alternate e-transportation. I hope that this C1 uh, scooter by Gyro helps you out, and I hope it's a budget and a price frame that you can afford. But if this doesn't suit your needs, I will keep looking until I find something that does help you. So anyways, folks, thanks for coming out with me again today. It's Joey. You're watching Vegas D-Tech. I'll catch you guys on the next review. You guys take it easy now.